Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make custom shortcuts for Visual Studio Code. Making custom shortcuts can save you a lot of time, because you can take a block of code that you type very frequently, and make it so that with a couple letters will give you that entire block of code. If you search for snippets in the marketplace, you'll find many extensions, such as JavaScript snippets, and snippets for React, and much more. But what if you want to make your own shortcuts? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make shortcuts for HTML and CSS with Emmet, and also how to make shortcuts for any language you want. First, we will make Emmet shortcuts. So I've created a folder that's called Emmet. And in this folder, I'll need to create a new file called snippets.json. I can do that by clicking New File, Save It as snippets.json. Now in this file, I'll need to create a JSON object. So I'll put curly braces around the outside, and then type HTML for my HTML snippets, and CSS for my CSS snippets. So first I'll start with HTML, and you'll write snippets, and then in here is where you'll add your snippets. If I wanted to create a shortcut ULL, that will create an unordered list with list items with class names, I'll need to put the Emmet abbreviation on this side. If you have not watched my video about Emmet abbreviations, you should watch that so you understand what I'm going to be doing here, and I'll put a link to it in the description. I'll say UL, and then inside of that an LI. And then I'll add a class name, item, dollar sign, which would be the number when I multiply the end, and then I can say item, dollar sign, to enable these shortcuts, I'll have to go to the user settings. So I'll press F1 and search for open user settings. Then I'll search for Emmet, and you'll see Emmet extensions path. I'll need to open this in the JSON and put the path name here. So this is the path name for where I have the snippets.json. So I will put this in here, and I'll need to escape these backslashes by putting a second one before them. And now if I type ULL in HTML file, I will get the abbreviation for unordered list with an item. Now I want to multiply this by three to get three items. Now if I type ULL, I get three items. And one more thing is that with snippets, you get a syntax for allowing you to have your replaceable text. So if I said dollar and then wrap this in curly braces, the, I, the text I want to replace, and then I number this, I'll say one. Now, if I type this shortcut, it highlights this entire text. So I can start typing whatever I want here, press tab, and the next part will be highlighted. So it makes it very easy to insert text. A simpler example is HSF. Let's say I wanted to create a shortcut. I'll add a header, a section, and a footer. This will be header plus section plus footer. Now if I type HSF in a HTML file, I can press tab and then I get a header, a section, and a footer. Now if I press exclamation for a boilerplate and then go to the body, I can type HSF and I get a header, section, and a footer in the body. Now let's go on to CSS shortcuts. After the HTML tag, we can make a comma and then CSS. Inside CSS, we can also create snippets. And inside of snippets, we can create our shortcuts. So let's say we wanted to do border none when we type bn. We can say bn colon border colon none and we do not put a semicolon. Now if we add a new file, we'll say style.css, and inside of here, I want to type border none, I can say bn, tab, and I get border none. And I can do that with border solid for BSD, I can say border one pixel solid and red, let's say. And if I do this, I can get BSD, border, one pixel, solid red, and it's highlights so I can change this text. 
let's say I wanted to give an option here, I can say one colon one pixel and then two colon red. And now this will be the first group which will be highlighted and then this will be the second group that will be highlighted and it will let me type text in those two spots. So now if I type BSD tab, it highlights one pixel, I can change it to five pixels, press tab, and now it's highlighting the color, so I can type black. I can do CW for color white, and if I test this out, CW would be color white. Anything that I type a lot can be added to this list to make it much faster for me to type shortcuts. Now, image shortcuts are pretty simple. They allow you to just do single lines of CSS and structures of HTML, but that's about it. You can't do JavaScript with Emmet, and you can't do other languages like PHP and everything else, or more complex snippets than this. So for this, we're going to use Visual Studio Code's built-in snippets. You can click File, Preferences, and then go to User Snippets. You can select the language you want if you want to make them for a specific language, or you can just click New Global Snippets File to make one for all languages. We can call it Global and press Enter, and now we have Global.Code Snippets. If you ever want to find these, you can open it and go to Review on File Explorer, and you'll be able to see which files you've made, and you can delete them or edit them as much as you need. Right now, I want to add a new shortcut. So to do this, I need to stay inside of these curly braces and give it a name. One thing I like to do when it opens up CSS files is I like to add this code over here that adds border box to every element. Box sizing border box helps you align elements more easily and it's very useful in every CSS project. So I want to make a shortcut that will make this instant. So I'll go to my global snippets file, and I'll say CSS boilerplate, that's what I'll call it. Inside of here, I have to say the scope. So I can say scope CSS, that would be the languages that it works on. And then I can say body. Body is going to be an array of each line of the snippet. So if I paste this here, I'll need to actually add quotes around everything. So I can press on the shortcut for split into lines. You can configure a keyboard shortcut for this. The action is called add cursor to line ends. And I have it configured to be control shift L, which is not the default, but you can change that in your keyboard settings or just click on that link. Now I'm at the end of every line. I can add an end quote and a comma. The beginning of every line I'll add a quotation mark, and now this is pretty close, but over here I want to have tabs. So I'm going to add cursors to here by holding down Alt. I'll delete that, and on the other side I'll say backslash T for tab. And then one more thing I need to add is the prefix, which is the actual shortcut. The prefix will be exclamation point. So now we have scope, which is the language, prefix, which is the thing that I need to type in order to get this shortcut, and then body is the actual code that will be created when I type the shortcut. So if I type exclamation point, I get CSS boilerplate. I press enter, and I get all of this code that I typed out. Another common thing I like to do in JavaScript is to do document query selector. So I'll create a new shortcut, make sure I have a comma between it, document query selector. Again, I'll have to specify the scope. So I'll say scope, and then JavaScript, the prefix, I'll make it DQS, and the body, will be document dot query selector 
and then inside of the parentheses, I want to be able to type something. So I'm going to escape these quotes so it will not be a problem. I'll write the body like this. And now in, inside of these quotes, I can say $1. Like we did before in Emmet, it also works here. If I say $1, it will skip to this point, making a cursor there. So now let's open up a new JavaScript file. I'll say script.js. And if we say dqs, I get document.query selector. Inside of here, I can start typing. So I can say dot title. And pressing tab will go to the end of the snippet. Now, one more JavaScript example. I will do add event listener. So I'll do add event listener. I will say scope JavaScript. Now, if you're only doing JavaScript shortcuts, you can actually create a file called JavaScript.code snippets by selecting it when you go to the preferences and user scripts. You can just say JavaScript, and that will create one specifically for JavaScript, and you won't have to say scope every time. This is a global file, so I'll need to specify which files I want to work in. Now I'll say prefix al body. Now this is going to be a few lines. I want to say add event listener. I'm going to say click as the default. And we'll get back to that. And then I'll have false as the third parameter. And in the middle is going to be the function. So I'll say dollar two like that. Now I don't want to always have a click event listener because I want other kinds of event listeners too. So I can, like we did for Emmet, put a one colon and on the other side a closing curly brace. So now this will be a group called group one and this will be the default text. So now if I said something like window.al tab now I get click, I can change that to load, and then I can type the function. So I could say like console.log or something like that. Now let's say I wanted to make it have a defined function. I'll create a new one called add event listener function. And this one, I'll, if I add an F, I will add instead of $2, I'll put function. And inside of here, curly braces, and I can even make this another line. So I can say comma, and then here's the second line, and then here's the third line. And in the second line, I can put tab and dollar two. So now, if I do window.alf, I get window to add event listener, I can specify what I want there and then tab, I get right into the body of this function. And I can start typing what I want this function to do. One more really cool feature about these snippets is that you can have variables. What I mean by that is things like the current directory you're in, the clipboard contents, what the current date is, or things like comments for the particular language that you're writing in. I'm gonna make a new shortcut called block comment. Inside of here, the scope will actually be HTML, JavaScript, CSS, PHP. You might be wondering, not all of these languages have the same comments, so how is this going to work? And you will see. If I say prefix, let's say CC for comment, and then I'll say body, and I make this dollar sign block comment start now this is a very specific wording it needs to be exactly block underscore comment underscore start all uppercase with a dollar sign preceding it this will take the code for the start of a block comment which in html looks like this and and in javascript it looks like this but it will do both depending on what language i'm writing in and now I can put in the middle here, let's say $1, so I can skip to this part, and then say dollar block comment end. And 
And now let's try this out. If I say CC tab, I start editing a block comment and say hello world. And if I'm in an HTML file, I can also do CC tab and I start editing a block comment in HTML. And even though they're not the same types of comments, it can, I can do them with the same shortcut by using this variable. Now let's say I want to get the path. I'm going to say on path, and for this one, I'm going to say scope PHP. I'll say prefix path and body will be path equals then dollar sign tm directory. Now let's see what this does. Open a new PHP file. I can say path. It includes the full path of this directory that I'm currently in. But you notice the dollar sign for path got removed. That's because dollar sign is a special character here. Anytime I'm using a dollar sign in my code, I'll need to put two dollar signs. The first dollar sign will escape the second dollar sign. And I'll also put this in quotes. And now my shortcut path will give me dollar path equals this string. If I do not specify the scope, then I can make a shortcut that will work anywhere. Let's say I want to put the current date in a file. I'll make a shortcut called date. The prefix will be date. And here I can say current month current date and current year. Now if I open up any file and I say date, I'll get 11-17-2020. If I do this in JavaScript, type date, I'll also get this in a JavaScript comment. And also in PHP, I can say date and I'll get a PHP comment. I can put slashes here if I want to. You can just customize these snippets to exactly how you want to use them. If there's an entire function you want to write where you fill in certain parts, you can put the entire function in a snippet and tell it which parts you want to fill in by using this syntax. You can specify default values or not specify default values, but just have a specific part that you want to insert stuff. And these just save a lot of time. Both Emmet snippets for CSS and snippets for all languages make coding much faster. I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content just like this. Please let me know what kind of videos you're interested in, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!